Hello and welcome back to another low-level JavaScript episode in this series all about building a 16-bit virtual machine. In this episode, I want to focus on adding a lot of new functionality and instructions. The instructions we add today are going to fall into four main categories. More moving instructions, more arithmetic capabilities for doing math, binary logic instructions, and branches. Let's start out with the move instructions. We're going to be adding three new move instructions, which allow us to do things in one instruction that would normally take us several. For example, moving a literal value to memory, moving a register pointer to a register, and move a literal address plus a register to a register. We can export those and move over to cpu.js to create their implementations. So first up is move literal to memory. This one's actually quite self-explanatory. We're going to fetch a literal value, then an address, and we're going to move that literal value to the address. This instruction is quite handy in the context of memory mapping, when you need to write a fixed message to a device. And first moving a literal value to a register and then transferring that register value to memory would be quite cumbersome. Next, we have register pointer to register. This is actually not as complex as it sounds. Basically, we just need to go through a few steps. First, we grab the register index. This is the thing that holds an address. Then we get another register index. This is the one where we're going to put the value in the end, the destination. Then we can get the pointer, that is the address in memory from the first register. And once we have the address, we can fetch the value from memory and finally move that value into our destination register. And for the last move instruction, we have move a literal address plus a register value to a register. So first we get the base address, then we get the register index that holds the offset, then a second register index, this one will be the destination, we get the offset from the first register, and then the value comes from fetching the memory with the base address plus the offset. This instruction is very useful when you have larger data structures. If you know where a data structure starts, and the elements within the structure are always in the same place relative to the start, that means you can easily pull individual parts out and manipulate them. So with the moves out of the way, we can move on to the arithmetic instructions. These are all pretty understandable from their names, but there are going to be some little details we need to keep our eye on. So as you can see, there are going to be instructions for adding, subtracting, multiplying, increment, and decrement. Add literal to register is just the literal version of the add register to register. By the way, what I'm calling a literal value here is actually often called an immediate value. I guess that's because it's immediately available. It's good to be aware of when different words sometimes just mean the same thing. So this one's pretty straightforward. We get the literal value, then the register index, get its value, then set the accumulator to the result of the addition. Then we have subtraction. Subtract literal value from register will be very similar to the add. First, we grab the literal value, then the register and its value. And the result is the register value minus the literal. And all of that goes back into the accumulator. This is a side note for now, but it's good to keep in mind here that all of the arithmetic is currently taking place using unsigned numbers. If we treat the 16 bits of a number as unsigned, we're basically saying that all of the bits represent counting from zero up until 65,535. If we treat those same 16 bits as signed, then they actually represent numbers that go from minus 32,768 up until 32,767. Luckily, addition and subtraction continue to work as normal, even when treating them as unsigned. 
This means we won't need different instructions to add or subtract numbers, even when we're thinking of them as signed. OK, so next we have subtract a register from a literal, which is just everything we did before, but in reverse. First we get the literal, then the register, then the final result is the literal minus the register. The final subtraction instruction is subtract register from register, which should at this point be quite self-explanatory. Next up, we have multiplication of a literal by a register. It works pretty much the same as addition and subtraction instructions, only now we need to multiply to get the results. Of course, very similarly is multiplication for two registers. However, there is something important to note here. Unlike addition and subtraction, which work the same for both signed and unsigned numbers, multiplication is a little bit more complicated and it has edge cases. And for this reason, to keep things simple, we will eventually have two more separate instructions for signed multiplication. Finally, we have the increment and decrement instructions. Starting with increment, we'll get a register and its current value, and the new value will be that plus one. But there's going to be a small difference with how we store the result. It's going to go directly into the same register that we got the value from in the first place, instead of into the accumulator. Many of the classic architectures that have an accumulator register for complex operations also allow for incrementing and decrementing registers in place, because it's a common enough operation that somewhere inside the circuitry there is specific logic for this. Decrement will be pretty much the same as increment, so I'll just copy paste the code here and make the couple of changes needed. That brings us to the logical instructions. These allow us to perform binary operations on all of the 16 bits at once, and they're extremely useful for a variety of reasons. We have left and right shift, and, or, xor, and not. Left shift a register by a literal value is going to be a lot like increment and decrement in that the shifts will be performed in place, applied directly to the register without going via the accumulator. When we perform a shift operation, we take all the binary bits and we move them to the left or the right by a certain amount. Any numbers that are outside the 16-bit boundary are essentially lost. And what's really happening here when we perform this kind of shift is a sort of multiplication by a power of two. For example, nine left shifted by two is actually the same thing as nine multiplied by two to the power of two. The actual implementation is fairly simple and quite similar to what we've already done with the arithmetic instructions. We get a register, a literal, and then the result is calculated by just using the left shift operator in JavaScript. And we can just assign the result and return. Left shift by a register is almost the same story again, except we use a register instead of a literal for the shifting value. So conceptually, left shift is a multiplication by a power of two, but right shifting is like a division by a power of two. But it's a very lossy division because, of course, we're dealing with integers instead of floating point numbers. Code wise, this is similar enough to left shift that we can just copy paste and apply the couple of changes. Next, we have the AND operation. AND takes two binary numbers and produces a new binary number where each place is one if both of the numbers have a one in that same place. Otherwise, it's a zero. And is useful for isolating a particular part of a number, like the bottom or the top byte, because we can purposefully put zeros in the places we want to ignore. 
To get the operands, we do all the same things we did before. And we use a single ampersand, which is binary and. Finally, that result is stored in the accumulator. And of course, that's the same thing for the register register variation. And we can actually just copy paste these two instructions to make the OR instructions. OR takes two binary numbers and produces a new binary number where each place is a one if either of the numbers have a one in that place. Otherwise, it's a zero. Practically speaking, if we only look at the bits, we can view any number as a set of Boolean values. In a 16-bit number, we have 16 possible Boolean values. The OR instruction can be used to specifically set certain bits to 1, which we can use to represent true. This means it's quite easy for us to efficiently use numbers as flag data structures. XOR works just like OR, except that it's exclusive meaning that each place is a 1 if either a number is a 1 in that place, but not if both are. XOR's practical uses are not as easy to highlight as AND or OR, but they're certainly there. When you XOR two numbers A and B together, you get a new number C. If you XOR A with C, you get B again. If you XOR B and C, you get back A. You can almost think of XOR as allowing you to generate some kind of keying relation between two numbers. Where when you have the key and one of the numbers, you can always get back the other. The final logical operation we'll implement today is NOT. This instruction allows us to flip all the bits in a number, so zeros go to ones and ones go to zero. There is only a single NOT instruction that operates on registers because doing this on literals wouldn't really make much sense. Now, there is a tricky edge case that we need to be aware of here. Under the hood, JavaScript's binary operations all work with 32-bit signed integers. For operations like AND, OR, or XOR, this doesn't really matter because we will never have any numbers in the top 16 bits of those 32. Because, of course, this VM only uses 16 bits. But if we use the binary not operator, which is the tilde, then internally JavaScript will turn our 16-bit number into a 32-bit number. And all the zeros in the top half will suddenly turn into ones. For this reason, after we do the not operation, we perform a binary AND with OXFFFF which lets us select just the bottom 16 bits and ignore whatever was on the top part. There are some more logical operations which sort of blur the boundary with arithmetic operations. For example, arithmetic shift, which preserves the sign of a number when shifting. And we might implement that at a later date when we add signed number capabilities. But for now, we're done with logical operations. And that just leaves us with the branching instructions. Now we're going to add 11 new branching instructions that will make it very straightforward to express conditional code paths in assembly. They are jump if not equal for comparing two registers, jump if equal to, jump if less than, jump if greater than, jump if less than or equal to, and of course jump if greater than or equal to. Interestingly, many architectures will have less of these kind of instructions because you can actually derive the behavior of all the instructions based on just one. We can write the jump if register not equal as getting first a register and its value, then the address that we should jump to, and comparing the register's value with the accumulator. If that register is not equal to the value in the accumulator, we perform the jump by setting the instruction pointer. The rest of the jumping instructions are implemented in very much the same way as the jump not equal instructions. So I will just copy those and make the changes, only modifying the operators in the comparison check. Later on, when we come to implement the flag register, we'll be adding a few more branching instructions, but until then, this will be enough. And with all these new instructions, 
the VM is in a much better position to be able to express complex programs. You might have noticed that the opcode numbering is a little bit inconsistent with all the instructions right now. That's because I'm working from a table that I'm constantly tweaking and moving instructions around in. When a fuller instruction set is finally decided upon, I'll reorganize the instructions in a more logical way that might even allow for faster processing in the VM. I'll make sure to share that in the repository. As always, related links can be found in the description. Thank you so much to all the patrons of Low Level JavaScript. If you want to support this channel too, you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash low level JavaScript for as little as $1 per episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.